Well, would you look who it is, Gotrek and Felix here today, folks. My name's Dov, and we're bringing it to you with some Total War Warhammer multiplayer. Yes, Gotrek and Felix, they're here, they're available to the Dwarves, Bretonia, and the Empire. We're going to be taking a look at uh, them in two battle replays today. So, first things first, these two, let's take a look at what they bring to the table. Um, I have cut some of their abilities down for this particular game, so we'll be going over things in general uh, in another video. But just to kind of uh, look what Felix has brought here, this is going to be his primary uh, sort of the reason you bring him, is this helping hand ability. It gives 44 melee attack and 44% damage resistance to a uh, lord or hero in within 50 meters for 22 seconds. So it does have to be used on lord or hero, and that 50 meters is a pretty short cast range. But that is a huge buff. 44 melee attack and 44% damage resistance. We'll talk about what this could potentially synergize with in a minute. As for his other effect there, this uh, Blood Oath. Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming this acts with other heroes within range. I actually haven't seen this regeneration buff act that much. But uh, supposedly, if we take a look within the tooltips here, um, that lords or heroes within uh, the this uh, area of effect should replenish their HP. If... Felix is in melee, so we'll see um, how, how much of an effect that has. Gotrek here comes with his own healing effect. Heroic Fortitude is only active if uh, his hit points go below 10%. It does have a 50% miscast chance, but it will uh, give himself some regeneration as well if he gets very, very low. Again, probably won't come into play a whole lot. If Gotrek gets that low, it's going to be a big danger, and it will disable once he goes, you know, gets to 10% HP, right? So, it uh, looks like it only has one cast anyway, so you're probably only going to get one healing proc from this, it looks like. Um, this is his self buff, though. Gotrek's Doom, 44 melee defense, and again, 44% damage resistance. Gotrek himself, magic damage, massive anti-large armor piercing damage. Uh, uh, Felix does less damage, but has an anti-infantry specialty instead. Felix coming in at 70 armor. Gotrek, of course, being a slayer, has zero armor. For the rest of the build, we've got Ungrim leading the way. So double slayer hero for the dwarves, backed up by three units of slayers. Got a couple of gyrocopters with brimstone guns, gyro bomber, front line of miners with some dwarf warriors. We're up against Hadriz Lizardmen here, and you can see right off the bat, my gyros are going to be in trouble because I don't have any ground support fire to go up in the air. And I immediately come over and start to make some bombing runs. We've got Two Croc scores here. Croc score Ancient, some Red Crests, and some Saurus. A single uh, Ancient Salamander here. We've also got more Red Crests and a uh, Skink Chief Lore of Beasts here. So you can see I am going to be coming up and trying to get a bombing run here, trying to drop some bombs. And the bombs actually do really solid damage to those Saurus Warriors, of course. Only 60 armor on them. So we are going to get the Gyro Bomber itself into uh, action here as well. And despite the. Uh, the uh, pterodons there. We are able to get a few bombs off, a lot of blasting charges as well, but the croc score is collapsing on the side. A beautiful amber spear from that skink priest just cuts through those dwarf warriors, and you can see actually gets a ton of kills. Side shotting amber spear like that can net you a ton of kills, but it can potentially be a little bit tricky to pull off. That being said, our heroes, for the time being, just trying to decide where they're going to go, but holy cow, Gotrek's model just looks so awesome. Same with Felix. And, I mean, especially you, like, look at him compared to the regular Slayers. And not that the regular Slayers look bad, but he just looks like so much more. You can see I do bring my Gyros down to the ground to make sure we screen out against those Pterodon Riders. I don't necessarily want to be caught up in melee, but the uh, the Slayer heroes are really what we're here for, right? So here comes Gotrek. He's going to get into action. Actually, just slays a Croxagore straight up there. Again, massive anti-large armor piercing, so he will do quite well uh, in this fight. Looks like he's pathing through. Trying to get to the Croxagore Ancient here. Likewise, uh, Ungrim probably going to be going after him as well. Meanwhile, we do have some effective fire here from the uh, Brimstone Guns and Gyro Bombers. We might be able to get a little bit of crossfire. Granted, I am kind of bunched up, so it's not the best right now. But obviously, Dwarf Warriors and Miners will eventually uh, get worn down. But again, I'm just banking on the Slayers here, uh, really holding out until the late game. Unfortunately, Felix is a little bit squishy compared to these other two um, in terms of his stats, especially against the Croc score Ancient, and you can see Felix unfortunately already routed off there, uh, having taken a bunch of damage from the uh, big boy already, but uh, Ungrim and Gautrek fighting side by side here. 
this is what we've all been waiting for, right? And they are together going to come in and start to take on this Croc Score Ancient. If we can get a good angle here, you can see the uh, Gyro Bomber also firing in there. Ungrim gets a good hit. Uh, Gautrek sort of waiting his turn, it looks like, just about. Maybe he'll get an attack in there. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that Croc Score Ancient definitely taking some damage. And here we go. Now they're both getting attacks. Gautrek getting a few swings in there. Oh, man, I love his animations, too. They look super cool. You can see that they're just wrecking that Croc Score Ancient. Just destroyed him super fast. That being said, I am taking some losses in my infantry balance of power. Starting to turn against me slightly. We have been able to deal with quite a few of the Pterodons, and you can see me kind of cross-firing here. But, unfortunately, I don't have any tools to deal with this baby right now. And it is accurate enough to actually pick that Gyro Bomber out of the air. And, obviously, with anti-large missiles, I guess not anti-large, but armor-piercing. We'll be able to take down the gyro, so a little bit of a rough situation, but maybe we can still bail them out and get some value here. That being said, obviously the two Slayer heroes are still very healthy, and you can see another Croxagore drops there to uh, Ungrim. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Gautrek just fighting back-to-back -back with Ungrim here, fending off some Saurus, and we're going to keep it pretty close in for cinematics so you guys can appreciate uh, just how awesome... Gautrek's animations are. He comes over, looks like he's going to slay a Croxagore. Oh yeah, just another one-shot on the Croxagore there. Man, he just does so much damage. Able to just about one-shot those Croxagore unit models there. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you see, I did miss the uh, the killing blow there, but the Salamander did actually pick the Gyro Bomber out of the air, so a little bit rough for me. We are trying to get some crossfire, but actually blows up one of those bombers, and it is going to disappear into the deep abyss there. Oh man, you know that pilot's in for a rough time. That being said, this uh, Death Star is kind of holding out here. You can see Felix came back from route, so he's now going to join up with the Slayer heroes, and we're going to go a little bit Hero Hammer in the late game as these three are going to uh, try, try and hold things out. It's going to be a little bit rough, but uh, you can see up in the air there that the uh, Pterodon Riders are able to eventually fend off the Brimstone Guns. Brimstone Guns are still doing a little bit of crossfire here, though, are uh, eking out some damage. And you can see the Salamander just actually routes from the, from Gautrek and Felix and and uh, and Ungrim getting too close there. But nice Amber Spear does some decent damage to Felix there. Um, but yeah... We're going to fast forward a little bit as these guys do uh, get into a melee here with some skinks. Eventually, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's just go fight the big Croc Scorp Lob because that's probably going to be the best uh, best place for us. So Felix leading the charge here. Obviously, his anti-infantry will be quite nice against these Saurus and so on. Gautrek getting in side by side. A massive splash attack there. So good stuff. I also love uh, Felix's animations as well. He's got this nice kind of uh, great sword aesthetic going on. Not exactly the same animations as the great swords, but very good stuff. Very, very good stuff. And unfortunately, it is going to be a loss for the Dowie here. You can see the balance of power starting to tell. Um, although, Gautrek and, and, and Ungrim will be able to hold out for quite some time here. Oh, man. And some devastating friendly fire. Literal friendly fire coming in from that uh, that uh, salamander there. Oh man, here comes another one. Ooh, just destroys a whole bunch of those infantry there, and it actually routes off a bunch of those units. So uh, yeah, balance of power equalizing slightly as a lot of those units get routed off. Um, I do make a bit of a mistake here in chasing or trying to get after the salamander. Honestly, Gautrek uh, with 42 speed is fast enough. He could have chased off a lot of these units, I think. But I do actually disengage there, and that is going to be able to let a lot of them come back. I don't know. Maybe with the Salamander it would have been too much, but chasing off all of those units I think definitely would have been good. You can see the balance power does slightly turn against me, though, as those units start to come back from route. And we will fast forward a little bit here through this late game until we get uh, get into another melee engagement. Now Ungrim and uh, Gautrek going to be slaying these foul Pterodon Riders. Oh, just another cleaving hit there. And yeah, although it will be an ignominious defeat for the dwarves, definitely uh, blame me for that one. You know, if I had brought even just like one unit of rangers, I potentially could have provided some covering fire for those gyros. If the gyros are able to get some effective work done and, uh, you know, potentially take out like the salamander and do some more damage just in general. I mean, you can see even with how badly I screwed that up, how close this battle is. And that is mostly due to these heroes right here. Just absolute beasts holding out and... 
you know, for the dwarves, I don't know that Gotrek and Felix will be a super common pick. I do think that because you don't have to worry about taking a caster with the dwarves, it's a lot easier to take both of them as the dwarves. Um, with the Empire, you're limited to Balthazar Gelt as a Lord level caster. And with Bretonia, you can take the Fey Enchantress. Now, the Fey Enchantress, I do think, is a will synergize very well because obviously she can heal both of them. She gives a favor of the Fey as well. They can kind of protect her, right? So, just in general, I think out of the three factions they're getting added to, uh, Bretonia is going to be sort of the most uh, valuable. Uh, you'll see the most, the, probably the most commonly used. Uh, Galtrek and Felix will be in that matchup, but you can see them just holding out like absolute lions here, just flinging Lizardmen left and right, doing so much damage. If we look at the kill totals, up to 79 kills on Galtrek, a lot of those being monsters, 49 for Ungrim. So yeah, pretty good stuff. I do have one more replay to show you guys. So we are going to fast forward a little bit through this late game here, but I don't want to miss out on too many of Galtrek's animations because, uh, yeah, they are super, super awesome. And, <clears throat> yeah, so definitely go pick up a copy of White Dwarf if you can. If not, then you are just going to have to sit tight. Um, you know, I understand some people aren't the biggest fan of the way Creative Assembly has chosen to done this, but from what I understand, you know, it's basically them using their marketing budget to create content, which, um, I mean, I work in marketing in my day job and you know I just create content for social media but I mean I create like pictures and stuff right or or like videos not not like full fully realized 3d models with full voice acting and uh, and you know unique abilities and animations and everything and uh, at some point Gautrek did actually go down here I'm not sure uh, I'm sure Felix will come back later and drag him away and that they'll go on to have more adventures but uh, yeah that's pretty much going to be the end of that, but as I was saying, just uh, I think it's super cool that Godtrek and Felix got added to the game to begin with. I mean, they are huge, huge uh, pieces of the lore and, you know, like, just beloved by many, many Warhammer fans, so I'm personally super happy, again, that they're sort of able to use their marketing budget rather than having to use, you know, uh, regular development funds in order to create them. But they're here, and they definitely did some heavy lifting here. Felix maybe was a little bit of a tough pick. He did get beat up pretty bad by that Croc score Ancient. Rather than having him with these two, I maybe should have had him in a separate group and just supporting, like, the infantry engagement, like, with these Dwarf Warriors or something. But, you know, you live and learn. Um, as for Gultrek himself, 89 kills. He definitely was the true MVP here. Killed a ton of Croc scores, helped do a ton of damage to the Croc score Ancient. And obviously killed quite a few infantry as well. Ungrim obviously doing some good damage also. And uh, yeah, I ultimately just ended up losing, I think, because I didn't bring, again, like one or two units of rangers. Just maybe swap these blasting charges out, get like one of these dwarf warriors out for a unit of rangers just to provide some overwatch fire on these pterodon riders. I don't know, maybe there's some different things you could do. The Gyro Bomber also isn't necessarily an ideal pick. You could switch this out for another Brimstone Gun and maybe go super wide in the air just so that the Pterodon Riders, you know, they can only get on one target at a time, right? So if you're providing nice aerial crossfire, then you can potentially get air superiority and then change your focus to the ground targets. Um, but I do think that sort of going with this very, uh, you know, unbreakable, high, high damage, high anti-large sort of infantry force with a lot of bodies to then soak hits, with the Air Force to, to do a lot of damage, I do think that there's something here for the Dwarves. And obviously having Ungrim and Gotrek gives you two very strong Unbreakable heroes to be able to uh, supplement that. So let's go on. I've got one re more replay to show you guys, so let's get to it. All right, and we're back, and this time it's just Gotrek. Felix, uh, unfortunately, you can see that we are in Bretonia with some Bretonians here. Uh, Felix actually got into a bit of a pickle in court. Uh, he was flirting with a Bretonian damsel, and, uh, you know, local lore didn't take too kindly to that. So, Felix ended up getting locked up, and in order to free him, Gautrek now must aid Albrick in his quest to push back an invading Lizardman force. How's that for you guys, huh? I'm not super big on the lore, but how's that for a nice little storyline for this battle? So, Anyway, let's talk more about this matchup. We've got Albrick here in the air with uh, his stuff. We've got uh, two blessed field trebuchets, a couple of peasant bowmen, uh, men-at-arms, two of them, two spear men-at-arms, a front line of filthy mobs, 
And we've got Beast Slayers of Bass Stone, supported by a Grail Relic. These guys are going to be a Gotrex uh, sort of bodyguard here, if you will. And then, uh, yeah, Defenders of the Fleur de Lis in the back. And we've also got these Companions of Quinell also. For the Invading Lizardman Force, we've got three units of Pterodon Riders here, including the Pawhawk Sentinels. Got the dreaded Dread Saurian. Actually quite good in this matchup. The Shredder of Lustria, a Life Slon to heal it. Some Star Chamber Guardians that are currently receiving all of the blessings of the Trebuchet. Another unit of Temple Guard. And we've got plenty of supporting Skinks as well. So, uh, yeah, basically, Gotrek is going to be here to support the Peasants. Now, I know, I know, Britonia usually just doesn't mind letting the peasants get killed, but one of Bretonia's biggest weaknesses is their lack of monster killing power, specifically against large armored monsters. You know, Warriors of Chaos, Lizardmen, Tomb Kings, all can potentially be tough matchups for, uh, for Bretonia. Now, I'll kind of show what I'm doing here. This is a little bit of a sneaky trip. Because the peasant mobs have an axe banner, Goltrek also has an axe banner. They have the same banner, so if your opponent's not paying attention, or if they look away momentarily, it almost might look like it's just another unit of mobs blobbed in there. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Bretonia does somewhat lack monster killing power, so we've got Goltrek here to support the infantry fight to do just that. You can see in the back, uh, archers fending off those uh, Pawk Sentinels, Pterodon Riders, likewise. Albrick standing here. I really don't want to drop rocks to go off right on the Blessed Field Trebuchets. A beautiful banishment by the Slon, but what's this? Gotrek's got a hold of the Slon. This is so bad for the Lizardmen. Oh man, you can see how much damage is doing being done to the Slon here. And um, obviously, pretty big mistake by Hadris. Hadris didn't actually notice. Um, so we obviously, you know, we were in chat. We we're talking after the fact, and. Um, Hadris actually couldn't see Gotrek behind the Slons. Like, if you look from his angle, you see how it's almost a little bit hard to see him in his flag behind the body of the Slon. This is absolutely devastating as the Slon has taken a ton of damage here. Meanwhile, the Shred of Lustria isn't making huge headway on my infantry. Beast Slayers and other units here with the support of the Grail Relic won't get terrified, and we will be able to hold out there with some additional healing from the uh, Damsel there. So, yeah, the Field Trebuchets are now getting skirmished down by the Pawhawk Sentinels and the Pterodon Riders, but we've already done a ton of damage to these Temple Guard. Alberic dives down for a risky dive, takes quite a bit of damage from the Shredder, but we're going to get back up in the air and just sort of hang around this pocket to provide some extra anti-large to all these troops. Meanwhile, Gotrek is now fighting the Ark of Sotek here. I for sure thought this was a Rev Crystal, but I guess it's an Ark of Sotek. And uh, you can see he does get staggered here, but because Dwarf Lords recently got a mass buff, that includes, you know, like Ungrim, uh, Grombrindle, quite a few others, Gautrek does fall into that similar weight class where, um, based on what I've seen, and I will have a testing video as well for you guys to check out, um, for you to be able to watch him, he doesn't get staggered very easily, and you can see even in this crazy monster mash here, he's still holding out quite well, has not taken a ton of damage, is doing consistent damage to this, uh, to this, uh, big monster here, the Ark of Sotek. He can also get some swings in on the Shredder, obviously. Oh, and a good side hit there, and you see how even in that big wild attack animation, he didn't get knocked over until, what, just then? So, yeah, he's doing pretty decent, although he has taken a few big hits directly from the Shredder of Lustria. Um, likewise, of course, with Lore of Life, we can heal him as well. You can see he's uh, doing a good job here. He's done quite a bit of damage, so, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Albrecht comes over, again, providing extra anti-large to everyone in this pocket, and we are going to get a nice little bit of a charge here. Obviously, the, the uh, defenders will pick up that anti-large bonus as well, and we'll be able to do a decent amount of damage to that Shredder of Lustria on the charge. The defenders are honestly super underrated. 63 charge bonus for a uh, cav unit of this price is actually very, very high, and you can see that very good damage on the Shredder, and likewise, Gautrek has finished off the Ark of Sotek here. Oh man, that temple guard trying to kick him in the head, but oh, oh, oh man, and Gautrek goes down to the Shredder of Lustria. You can see I was just about to pop him with a regrowth there, but uh, unfortunately Gautrek does go down. So he gets killed here, but I mean the balance of power so far in my favor at this point. Gautrek obviously had assassinated the Slon already, had done a ton of damage to the Shredder of Lustria and to the Ark of Sotek both, so... Yeah, definitely paid his dues here, and uh, although he is quote-unquote dead, 
I mean, it's God Trek, right? He actually can't die. So <laughs> I'm sure, again, he'll uh, he'll just uh, get dragged off by Felix. And, you know, I would say that this has definitely fulfilled the uh, requirements of getting Felix released from that Bretonian jail. So pretty good stuff. You can see just kind of uh, maneuvering all across the field here. We do have a few last Lizardman units to fend off. So we're going to put it into a little bit of fast forward as... The star of the show has already left the stage, and it's just a matter of cleaning up these last few units here. You can see uh, the Shredder actually does come in and do some really good damage, but the Beast Slayers, uh, once again, holding out with that Grail Relic, very important. Albrecht comes back, finishes off the, the, the Shredder of Lustria, and that'll be game. So, very well played to Hatteras. Big thanks for playing some uh, practice games with me. And I definitely think that it requires some more looking at, but I, for Bretonia, I think that Gautrek in particular is going to be super, super strong. Um, again, I, I may release the testing video before this one, so you guys might have actually seen, like, their abilities and stuff. And I'll probably talk about more of the synergies, uh, potential synergies in that video. But this one sort of showed off a couple of them that I was thinking of. First is, you know, just having the double Unbreakable Lord for the Dwarves. Second is having another monster killer for Bretonia, and especially one that can help support your infantry line. Uh, Gautrek just doing super heavy lifting. Obviously, Hadris did make a bit of a mistake there in uh, letting his slon get caught. But again, Gautrek, because of the, the unit card similarity to the, the peasant mob, because of his very small size, and he's very fast as well, he actually... Uh, you know, uh, the burst damage, again, it was another huge component of that. And with all of that together, he was able to take out the Salon very efficiently. And then come back and still do a bunch of damage to, like, that Arc of Sotek and the Shredder of Lustria. So, I'm definitely a fan of Gautrek for Bretonia. I think that Felix could potentially be a decent pick as well if you're using the uh, support buff to support either Lewin or Albrick. Likewise, the Fey plus both of the heroes on foot, I think, also will be pretty good in some matchups. Um, for the Dwarfs, I think it'll be decent as well. The Empire we'll talk more about in another video. But that's all for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Gautrek and Felix doublecast. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. So every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.